using Wi-Fi on the Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano. First thing we need to do is open up an SSH connection to our pineapple, of course. And one of the requirements of Wi-Fi is Reaver. So unless you've already got this installed, we need to install that. Just run opkg update. Wait for that to finish downloading all its packages. And now we just run opkg install reaver. Alright, so now that we have reaver, the next thing we need to do is download Wi-Fi itself. You could just download the normal Wi-Fi that comes with most Kali Linux distributions, but I prefer a version by SciVisions, mainly because it has a couple extra bug fixes and extra features like that, so I'll go ahead and install that one. Okay, so if you did want the normal version instead, you would just replace this SciVisions with DERV82. But since I like the other one better, and just run that, and that will go ahead and download whichever version you've chosen. Next, we're going to want to move that into our bin folder, that way we can run it from anywhere. And now let's just move to that folder. Uh, where am I? Okay. And now you can see we have wifi.py. Next thing we need to make, need to do is make it executable. So tmod plus what was that? Plus x wifi.py. All right. So now we can just go ahead and run that. All right, as you can see, it's running normally. It does show that there is a couple programs that we don't have. As far as I'm aware, those are not on the Wi-Fi Pineapple yet, but they are not required. So we can just go ahead and close this. And that's it if you already know how to use Wi-Fi. If not, keep watching and I'll give you a short demonstration. Okay, now that we've installed Wi-Fi, let me give you a short demonstration on how to use it. For this, I've set up a small router and I've got two devices connected to it, and we're just going to attack that. So, before we start, I'm going to show you all the commands that you can use with Wi Fi. So, we can just run Wi Fi.py tag h. And this will just show you a big list of everything you can use with Wi Fi. For example, um, if you wanted to strip the handshakes, you can do that here. But as you can see, this uses T Shark or Pirate, and we do not have those on the Nano, so we can't use that. If you wanted to only target WPA networks, you could just add this at the end. So if you ever forget those, you can always find this here. For me, I'm just going to run Wi-Fi.py, and I'm going to add TAC MAC. This will randomize the MAC address. Alright, so here it's going to ask me which Wi-Fi card I want to use. I would not recommend using WLAN 0 because that's the one broadcasting your AP, assuming that you're using this in an average situation. So you're usually going to use WLAN 3 or WLAN 2 if you have a USB card plugged in. I would recommend using WLAN 1, assuming you are not using the Pine AP. As you can see, it just changed its MAC address, and now it's enabling monitor mode. Alright, so now it's going to scan all the networks around you and try to figure out if they have any clients. As you can see here, it shows what channel it's on, which encryption it's using, your signal strength, and whether or not it has WPS. So as you can see, we are going to be attacking Fallen here. It's just a small network that I set up. And if you notice, it doesn't show that it has any clients. For this attack to work, there has to be clients connected to this network. How it works, it kicks them offline, and whenever they come back online, it pretty much records 
that whole transaction. So even if it doesn't show there's clients, it still may work because there might be clients on there. It just doesn't detect them. But it's usually best to wait for it to show at least one client, at least. So let's go ahead and start this. After it's shown the network that you've seen, just press Control C. And now it's going to ask you which one of these you want to attack. I'm going to be attacking number two here. Okay, so after you choose what network you're going to attack, for me this happened really fast because I'm like right next to the network and I have all these devices to connect to it. But let me explain what would normally happen. It's a bit slower normally, so. First thing you go through here, it's going to start the capture. It's going to possibly find more clients. This is me, I actually connected a couple other devices, that way there'd be more of a chance of this happening faster. And here it sends 5 DAUs to this 9048.9a MAC address, which I believe is my laptop. So what this has done, it kicks my laptop off of the Wi-Fi. Now my laptop is automatically going to try to reconnect to this Wi-Fi. Whenever it reconnects to it, this program records that connection. And then you can use this later to brute force a WPA password. Now, as you can see, again, it's unable to strip it because we don't have Pirate or T-Shark, but that doesn't really matter. It's not required. Now, as you can see, it says 0 out of 1 WPA attack succeeded. This is because even though we did capture the handshake, we haven't actually brute forced the password yet. For this, the pineapple is not nearly strong enough. You're going to need to use this on another computer. But if you have, say, a semi-decent laptop and you're running this on there, there's also a few commands you can use to tell this to automatically try to brute force that. Now it's going to go ahead and automatically disable monitor mode and bring your Mac back to what it was, and then it's done. So what do you do next? Well, now it's saved this handshake file here. So now you can move this to a computer or, you know, something stronger than the pineapple and run it through maybe Calpatty, Pirate, OCL, Hashcat, one of those, and basically you take that handshake, you take a really large password dictionary, and your computer's going to run through every password in that dictionary, and if the password's on there, it will tell it to you. Now, about how long this takes, I have a really large password dictionary that's, I think it's just under 1 billion words, and I'm using a non-overclocked NVIDIA GTX 960, and it takes about three and a half hours to go through it. Now, of course, that is a really huge 14 gigabyte password list. Most password lists I run through take about maybe 10 minutes. I will make another video on that sometime, but I don't know if I have the time to do that right now. Anyways, if you have any problems, let me know, and I'll try to help you.